What's up lads, you're with Budget Monk. Welcome to a new series here on my channel called Basically EU4. So what has inspired the series is that in the past when I have made uh, content on my channel, um, perhaps admittedly an aspect of that has been uh, me trying to sort of show off or flex um, for my own good as to how perhaps skilled I am at the game. And as a result, what ends up happening is um, the content is often too advanced for people. And what is inspiring this series is the exact opposite, where I want to go over perhaps some things that may be perceived as certain players to be too basic, hence the term basically EU4. Uh, the reality is, is that I have almost 10,000 hours played in EU4 by now, guys, and uh, the intention of this series is to basically catch up people uh, in regards to the meta game, or at least my own personal meta inside of my own head, downloading that information here to like a catch-up mechanic for those of you who are benefited by this type of uh, content. So with that being said, uh, this first video is going to be what I call the pseudo end node. So we're going to be addressing end nodes and how you can go about min-maxing your trade as a nation to actually simulate an end node in other theaters. So today we're going to be using the uh, Ottomans within Constantinople, although I am beginning as Venice here as you can see. Um, but other very powerful nations, there are many powerful nations to do this uh, same tactic on. It could be uh, Castile or um, a Novgorod power. And uh, I hope that you can extrapolate this information to whichever region benefits you the most. So as we get into the details here, I just want to explain that I am on normal difficulty for the purposes of this video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to actually hand off my provinces within Ragusa. And uh, one way we can do that is simply by releasing these nations uh, as vassals and then I'm going to jump over to um, the Ottomans and actually integrate them into the country, okay? Alright lads, like I said, uh, all I've been doing here is uh, just switching over to the Ottoman tag here and integrating nations just like that using the console command. And more specifically, I integrated everything with inside of the Ragusan region and just for clean borders here, we're going to go ahead and return these provinces inside of Pesh there. So I've done everything with inside of the Constantinople node and the Ragusan node. That's all that we own. Uh, so before continuing on here, let's just talk about the real basic basics of the end nodes here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game just for a period while we talk about this. What is an end node? Uh, the difference between a regular node, a trading node, and an end node is of course that an end node has no areas in which the trade actually ble bleeds out for. So we just ended the month there so people can establish their merchants and so on. And uh, you'll notice right off the bat that most end nodes, which I believe there is only three in the game, the English Channel, Genoa, and, Ragu uh, and Venice, excuse me, they all um, are fairly large right off the bat, we'll notice that. So Constantinople did take a little bit of a nerf in uh, the most recent uh, Emperor DLC. Uh, and the major reason why is Persia goes into Aristocan, but it's still eight ducats there. There's a reasonable amount of money. Um, but we can see compared to the worst of the end nodes, Venice, uh, it's it's not as good. So end nodes are typically good because there's nowhere for the money to uh, leave to. And uh, what makes an end node distinct compared to other nodes is the retention of the trade, of course. There is 100% trade power being retained. So if we look at literally any other node in the game, you will see how much of the trade is being retained. Some are better than others. Which means, of course, if you owned every single province with inside of the trade node and you had very good trade power, you still are not going to be getting all of the money because the money is going to be sent out to other nodes. So nations like Pest are here, or Hungary rather, the nation inside of Pest, even though they have pretty much supreme dominance over Pest, they lose most of their money. That is the difference between an end node. If you, as you rise through the ranks of an end node, in terms of your dominance and the percentage of that you control, you can rest assured that that is going to be how much money you're actually receiving out of the total amount of affluence in the node. And that is the uh, major difference, obviously. Now, what we're talking about today is what I deem the pseudo end node. And what is a pseudo end node? It is this. We have 100% retention inside of Constantinople. Uh, so this is something that uh, some people might not be aware of. 
and this is what I'm trying to demonstrate here. I'm letting time roll here so again you can see uh, this isn't going to fluctuate. We have 100% control. So we have effectively created, you can see, 0, 0.00 leaves Constantinople, which is our home node, of course. We have created an end node for all intents and purposes. And how did we do that? By annexing the entire Ragusan node. So what is the phenomenon that is occurring here? Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that the Ragusan node is not powerful. And they would be right that if you were a nation like a Ragusa, let's say, and you're conquering your neighbors, and let's say you can even overcome the Ottomans, trying to collect in Ragusa is uh, very difficult. And the to be quite forward and right to the point the reason is because it bleeds into three different areas predominantly that is the reason why but without trying to digress down into that um whereas you can see constantinople only bleeds into one area uh, with that being said if you were playing as ragusa it would still retain the strength and value the ragusa node you would just end up moving your trade over to constantinople in that case uh, so the ragusa node is strong it is simply utilized in a different way. It's utilized as a uh, blocker to prevent you from losing trade as you crusade out eastward. Uh, so the intention of the Ragusan node is to make Constantinople powerful. And there are many other nodes which, um, for example, Valencia does the exact same thing, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So quite simply, all you need to do is dominate uh, Ragusa. The Ottomans begin with some control in Ragusa, and most of the node is basically natural clay for them. They're intended to with permanent claims and emissions and so on. And they are orthodox provinces. The aggressive expansion penalty is not too hard. They're intended to clean up this region. There are some nice provinces, of course, like gold, uh, regardless of trade. But the real strength is that it turns Constantinople into an end node. So if we compare the Ottomans to, I don't know, I feel like Austria is a pretty comparable nation in terms of strength and so on. Very different nation. But uh, what would an Austrian player typically do? They have a, as you can see, a, a little bit of influence in Venice, very little, but uh, they do border some of these more valuable provinces. And an Austrian player very typically is just going to begin expanding into Venice and start collecting trade there, right? Because it's a, a juicy, juicy end node. And if you were um, very far away from an end node like Venice, you might feel like you don't have that option and life's not good. Well, in the case of the Ottomans, um, in terms of owning the all of the provinces in Constantinople, uh, let's say Byzantium is free, right? Because let's be honest, it is. It just takes a little bit of a time investment. Well, you have to deal with Janda. Very easy. You have to take these two provinces from Genoa. Um, lately, Genoa leaves the empire. That's pretty easy. Uh, the knights, of course, and uh, these two provinces here. And that is all that it takes to actually take Constantinople. So compared to the so-called better situation of Austria, dominating Constantinople is an absolute joke, right? Um, then you might say, well, okay, you're still not going to retain the trade though, right? You have to dominate Ragusa. That's true. So like I said, the AE is uh, quite low and so on. Uh, but yeah, it, it's really not that difficult. Basically, if you look at Austria to really summarize, you're slowly going to expand into an end node. And the way that you should be looking at the Ottomans is you're slowly going to expand into an end node. It's effectively identical. So I just want to make that clear. Um, by dominating Ragusa as a bottleneck, these nations, the way that it works is collectively, these guys have 100% control in Venice. And that collectively gives these nations a tenth of that power with inside of Ragusa. So you can see they're pulling from Ragusa into Venice. It's a tenth. So in the case of Venice, they have around 50%. Uh, and this, in this case, will be rounded up. Maybe here's some light chips there, but that's why here's six, six. You can see how if this was a 51 or so on, well, you get the point. He might have something else at play giving him trade power. But a 6% six, six is near a tenth of 50%. Uh, that is what is actually happening here. Now, how much does a 6% Venice nation have control in Constantinople without owning any land, any territory, anything else? They're going to have 0 0.6. 0 0.6. So in this case, the AI does not even deem it worthy of putting a merchant in there. Keep in mind, as both of these nodes are coastal, and you can protect trade here. 
you may find that if a nation like Venice in the late game builds up a boatload of ships, if they become genuinely massive and a very powerful nation, in that case, you may have issues where they either protect trade or privateer the node Constantinople. Um, this would actually be flawless in an inland area. However, uh, like I said, on the coastal regions, uh, you may see this drop down from you know 100% to 99 or 98%. It is possible. Uh, but with that being said, they are basically bottlenecked here, right? This trade power does not affect this very much. So that is what I call a pseudo end node. I hope that helps you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few more examples as to where this can actually be applicable. All right, I just switched over to uh, Castile here. Now, I'm not going to use the console commands to integrate everything the same way, guys, to uh, demonstrate it to you. I'm just going to uh, really quickly discuss some of this uh, situation here. So let's assume that uh, Castile inherits Aragon for free, right? Nowadays, with the current meta, with the fact that a regent or queen regent makes it quite easy and they've extended the time for you to get the Iberian wedding. And then, obviously, you can form Spain if you wish to integrate Aragon for free. It's very easy to actually dominate Valencia. Uh, you, provided that you assume Aragon's land is yours, you actually have five provinces missing out of the entire Valencia node here owned by France, okay? So if you make it a priority to occupy those provinces, Ragusa, excuse me, <laughs> Valencia will act identically to Ragusa and create a buffer here from these Genoese, where collectively, let's say they have 100%, they're going to have 10% here and 1% here. That's provided if they even think it's worth their time to put a merchant into this node so therefore you can build a very a tall nation powerful nation and funnel wealth into valencia identically to an end node um, so which regardless of which region you're in i'm trying to show you guys that that is how you can uh, make the most money just being very deliberate understanding the trade mechanics and this can be used in manners in which that might surprise you for example hungary um, hungary has a small amount of control over ragusa due to this area he owns from croatia in the beginning of the game and um you naturally are going to expand into uh, ragusa to some extent venice is a natural rival of yours and he owns control here and obviously the ottomans are as well so what you might find as hungary is that you can push out east and deal with your rival venice and you might feel pretty sore and upset that your trade is really really bad well I do want to remind you guys that if you dominate just like the end of the game, if you dominate the whole world and therefore all three end nodes, you can collect their 100% of the trade power without actually moving your trade port. So just keep that in mind. So as Hungary, your trade isn't amazing in the beginning of the game, but who is? Whose trade is? As you dominate Ragusa, you can increase your trade. Something to think about. Maybe uh, Moldavia, you can increase your trade. But then later on, as you dominate Constantinople, you can collect here without even moving your trade port at 100% due to your domination over Ragusa. So this is an example of how, regardless of which nation you're playing, you can tap into huge amounts of wealth as Hungary by just doing a natural crusade out eastward. Um, another example would be uh, Russia here. People are under the impression that the White Sea is a terrible trading region, and they would be correct in the sense of collecting there. But you can see here, right from the beginning of the game, zero money is leaving to the White Sea. And that is the intention of the White Sea, is that zero leaves. So even though, from a Russian player's perspective, this is uh, bleeding out to two different, different areas, it effectively, there is only one area, much like Constantinople or uh, Sevilla, where the money is actually leaving to due to the completion or the domination of the White Sea already. So a Russian player might have it in their mind to dominate the Baltic. And when I was a very noob player, I used to think, well, if we dominate the Baltic, then we can combine both um, trade values and collect as much as we can in the Baltic. There's nothing stopping you from the late game, especially nowadays with the amount of trade companies you can get and therefore the amount of merchants from collecting in the Baltic. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. But no, the real intention here is to dominate the Baltic so that whatever you bring into Novgorod is going to stay there, 100% of which. And you can just build up trade power via um, manufactories, for example, or even in Siberia using the trading company me mechanics to increase trade power and just pile more and more and more wealth into Novgorod. So I feel like that's a pretty sufficient uh, demonstration of an end node.
and regardless of which nation you're playing to as, excuse me, whether you want to relocate to another node or whether it's uh, very suitable, um, I hope that that gives you enough information to extrapolate the pseudo end node and apply it to whichever region of the game that you're playing in. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And I do want to utilize my own uh, content to plug myself. I am a streamer over on Twitch, guys. Twitch.tv forward slash budgetmonk119. And I do stream uh, fairly often. So I'm twiddling my thumbs a little bit as I'm waiting for the Leviathan DLC to come out. Uh, but I do want you to uh, be aware of that and come chill out and watch me live stream. With that being said, please give me uh, some feedback, guys, as to whether you like this uh, video. If you're looking forward to the series of uh, breaking down some sort of semi-basic um, content or subject matters, uh, feel free to give me your feedback, suggestions as to what other things you would like to see, whether it's governing capacity or uh, governing reform progress or anything of that nature. And yeah, give me feedback if you would like to see the return of sort of old school um, tutorials, some hardcore content as well. Just let me know. I'd be very interested to see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.